Hi, and welcome to Today's Parent. On Today's Parent, we connect you with experts and provide you with information to make your parenting journey a bit more easier. I am your host, Kristin Cassina, and today we are talking about baby milestones. We have an expert in studio who's going to share with you, especially young parents. I know we always wonder, when is my baby going to talk? When is my baby going to walk? Today you are in good hands. I have in studio Dr. Mate from MP Shah who will take us through baby milestones. Dr. Ari, yes. welcome to the show. Thank you, Christine, for having me. Tell me, let's start from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. What are baby milestones? Okay. Simply put, uh, we call them developmental milestones. So we talk about babies, they grow and they develop. So developmental milestones basically are behaviors and physical activities or physical skills right. that babies achieve as they grow and develop. Okay. So there are different stages um, for the developmental milestones, and it starts all the way from birth up to 18 years of age. Right. Yes. So developmental milestones, if you could just break it down for me, you mentioned about physical. Mm -hmm. So are there different categories of developmental milestones, or if you could break it down for us? Okay. So there are actually different categories of developmental milestones. So you have what you call motor milestones. Motor means they have to do with muscles. Right. So how a child learns to walk, how they learn to walk up the stairs, how they learn to ride a bicycle, anything that has to do with muscle. And in motor milestones, you have what is called gross motor, meaning they use the large muscles. So that's legs, that's walking, running, standing, those are. Uh, the gross motor milestones, and then you have the fine. Fine means where you use the smaller muscles. So right. Where the child learns how to hold a pen or a crayon and color, where they learn how to hold a toy. So those are the motor, fine motor milestones. Okay. And then you have uh, speech uh, as one of the developmental milestones. So how a child learns how to talk from crying to making sounds and now articulating their words. So you also have speech development. And then you have cognitive. Cognitive. Yes. Cognitive is just basically how a child is able to think and interpret the information. So you have cognitive development. And then you also have social and emotional development. And this is how they're able to interact with other people, be it their peers, be it adults, uh, strangers, and also how they're able to deal with emotion okay. and uh, with the environmental. So Dr. Mate. What are the developmental milestones that a child goes through from the time they are born? Mm -hmm. See it where they are way older. I don't know how far you want to go into mm -hmm. to explaining it, okay. but I'll let you take it away. All right. So I'll just give a brief overview. When it comes to developmental milestones, you have different stages that uh, babies go through. And they vary in age. So we give a range. Okay. So um, it's, you'll find most of the time you will have an age range for a certain developmental milestone they are supposed to achieve. So I'll give you an example uh, from birth. Usually we say the first three months, from zero to three months, we expect uh, babies to achieve certain motor milestones. And the first one is he uh, head support or so, neck support. Right. So we expect the child to hold up their neck and are able to turn and interact with the environment. If you've seen a baby, or most people who've seen a baby, they have they do not have any neck support. Their head is very floppy. So that's when you need you need to get worried at that point. Yes. So we expect the first three months of life that this child will develop to a point where they're able to achieve neck support and hold up their neck and be able to actually turn and take in their environment. And then from age of three to six months, now we expect this child to have a little more movement in terms of they're able to roll over. So if you put them on their back, they're able to roll back to, to their roll tummy. Back to, okay. Put them on their tummy, they're able to roll, roll back to, their, to back. their to their back. Yes. So all these are motor milestones that they're developing within a certain age range. Okay. And then from six months to nine months, now we expect them to start sitting with a bit of support. So if you prop a baby and you put maybe some pillows or some support, we expect them to at least sit for a few minutes without falling over. Right. Yeah. And then from 9 to 12, then you start noticing the baby starts to crawl. Different variations of crawling. They are what you call an army crawl, where they're on their hands and their tummy. And then there's a regular crawl where they're using their knees and their hands. So it's a development. They develop slowly. And then by the time they're anywhere from 8 months, a child can start walking. Even before you go 
to the next step, mm -hmm. I've just remembered, you know, there are kids who don't crawl at all. Yes. So there could be a new mom, a new dad out there who is wondering, okay, how, how is it that my child is not crawling? Yes. So maybe you could just reassure them that it's not something to worry about. It's actually not. We've had a lot of cases where the parents will come to me like, my child is not crawling. But then we ask them, what is your child doing? And they're like, oh, no, they'll hold on to the stool and they'll be able to lift themselves up. Right. Like, Fantastic. They've achieved a motor milestone. So that's why we say there are different ranges and different children move through these developmental milestones differently. So we do not encourage parents to compare because they'll be like, my daughter did this. Why is my son not doing this? Or so and so's baby is doing this. And mine is mine not doing that. Not. So we take them at their own pace. And you achieve them at different ages. That is why there's a range. And for example, like walking, you find a child starts walking as early as eight months. And there's another one who will wait until 18 months. And there's wow. nothing wrong with that. It's just a range of development. And it depends on their exposure and um, how quickly it is that they're being exposed to these skills that they need to learn. Right. Yes. So let's go into developmental delays. Mm -hmm. As a parent, when do I need to get worried? Okay. So there are what we call um, developmental delays means that your child hasn't achieved a certain skill within that range that we've given. So not to say that if your child hasn't started working by 12 months, they have a developmental delay. There are those momentarily where you have a, moment, a short moment of a delay. But if you give a child some time, or if you give them some more prompting, they will be able to achieve it. Right. And then there's that prolonged delay, or you might find multiple delays. Like, for example, there's a delay in a motor milestone where a child is not really able to sit. They have a delay in developing their speech. So you find it's not just one category where there's a delay, and that's where you start to get concerned. And you need to now bring them for an assessment because a developmental delay could be a sign of an underlying disorder. Right. The reason I say this is because there are a lot of uh, factors that could lead to a child getting a developmental delay. Anything from um, any complications during pregnancy, for example, if mom is exposed to certain toxins, alcohol, drugs during pregnancy, it could affect a child later in life, and this is where you might see some developmental delays. Right. If the baby is born premature, they may have a bit of developmental delays, um, simply because sometimes you have some delay in the brain development. So you could have a bit of speech delay, behavioral uh, delay, cognitive delay, like I said. And then you have uh, other things during the birth process. If there's any form of birth injury, um, baby, what people say, baby gets tired or there's lack of oxygen to the baby's brain right. during delivery, this could all contribute. You also have hereditary or chromosomal disorders, which could contribute to that. Things like Down syndrome, where you find there are some cognitive delays in how the child is able to interpret, uh, communicate. So these are some of the risk factors. So if you notice that um, your child is not achieving a certain milestone, and there are very many tools to help you, uh, like CDC, have a very good, what they call a milestone tracker for every month, from two months all the way to five years. So even as medical professionals, we use these tools to assist us. Because sometimes it's very hard to remember what is my son supposed to do at two months, what is my child supposed to do at four months. So we use these tools to help us. And it's a very nice guide because it tells you exactly what your child is supposed to have achieved, when you should be worried, and what is it that you need to do to encourage your child to reach that milestone. I'm just wondering how parents can access this information because mm -hmm. I, I, I've never thought about, I don't even know how to access CDC. Yeah. It, it sounds like some government <laughs> corporation where like entering is even a problem. <laughs> no, no, not it's at all. It's accessible to the public? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it's a Center for Disease Control. And they have a website, CDC website. So all you need to do is um, just go on Google, uh, CDC website, or you can actually just type developmental milestones, CDC. And the first thing that actually comes up is CDC, Milestone Tracker. It's a very good tool, very easy to use. And like I said, the reason that I like it is that it not only tells you what you're supposed to be looking at, but it offers you solutions. Because with developmental milestones, we realize that most parents do not know 
how to encourage their children. Right. You know, like with babies, when you come for your visits with a baby for vaccinations and just to see how they're growing, uh, you find that most parents will concentrate on how much weight are they gaining, um, which vaccines do I need to give. And this is where it's upon the pediatrician or your primary health physician to prompt you. It's like, so what is your child doing at two months? Okay, this is what you need to do. Like, if you have a child who is uh, from two months, two to three months, you want to do simple things with them, sing to them. Because they know your voice, especially a mother's voice. Sing to them, play peek a with them. You want to play interactive games. Because the common saying, um, they see, then they do. That's how children learn. So there are certain things that parents can do to encourage developmental milestones. I'll hold you there. What we're going to do, we're going to take a short break. Right. And then when we come back from the break, you're going to share with us in detail what parents can do at home mm -hmm. to help their children when it comes to matters development. Okay. Welcome back to today's parent. On today's episode, we are talking about baby milestones. And we have a question that has come in from Halima in Mombasa. And her question is, how can I tell when my child has developmental delays? Dr. Mm -hmm. what's your take on that? Okay, so there are various ways to check. And like we said, given that there are different developmental milestones, maybe I'll just touch on each of the milestones and how you can identify a delay. So let's start with the most common, speech delay. Uh, so when it comes to speech delay, you have what is called language and speech delay. So when it comes to speech, this is where you get coordination of the jaw muscles, your vocal cords, your lips, your tongue. So there is a difference between language and speech delay. Language, on the other hand, is how you express yourself, how you interpret and communicate right. as a result. So for example, you might have a child who may not be able to verbalize, they may not be able to use words and say, this is a cup, or I want some milk. But they will be able to take your hand and show and you. show you. So they are communicating, their language is okay, because language can be talking, it can be gesturing, it can be sign language. But they are not able to develop their speech. So this is a child who has an isolated speech delay, not right. so much language. So in that scenario, you want to have this child checked because there are a certain number of things that can cause your child to have a speech delay. One, it could be that they're having a hearing loss. They have an issue with hearing. So one of the things that you do when you notice a child has a speech delay is you want to check for hearing assessment. Is this a child who's been having recurrent ear infections? The other thing to check in younger babies below six months, from newborns to six months, a very easy way for moms to tell if your child has a hearing problem or not. If you notice, for most people with children, if you have a baby who's sitting and playing with their toy and you have a loud bang, they either startle or they turn. That's true. To where the sound is. So if, for example, the child is playing and the door bangs and they are not even interested, so that's a red flag. So most children, even without realizing it, will respond to a sound. So that's another way to tell. So that's one with speech development. The other one is like motor development. So like we said, um, walking, which is the most common one, will go anywhere from eight months, eight months to 18 months. So if you realize your child is now two years old and they're not able to support themselves in a standing position, they're not able to take a step, then that's a concern because they're outside the range that we've, be, we've given. And it's a pretty big range. It's a 10-month range. Eight and 18 months. Yes. So if by the time your child is getting to two years and they're not able to walk, then that's a red flag. Same thing with sitting, for example. We said from six to nine months, you expect the child to be sitting with some support. Right. So if you're getting to nine months and you have a very floppy child who is not able to sit, then that's a red flag. In our setup, we have uh, very commonly most children end up having rickets, which is where you have a deficiency in calcium and vitamin D. And this happens because we're in an urban setup. So a lot of children are indoors. They grow up in apartments. That's true. Rarely go out in the sun. So if your child is suffering from rickets or a deficiency of calcium and vitamin D, 
then you might find they have a bit of delay in their motor milestones because the bones are not very strong and therefore your child will not be able to support themselves when they are standing. So they're not exposed to enough sunlight? Exactly. So this is something else that we encourage parents from the newborn stage, take your children outside. We have this African culture for do not take the child outside for the first three months of their life. So these are some of the myths that we also demystify because the more your child is indoors, yes, they're getting calcium, they're breastfeeding, they're taking milk, and you think, ah, their bones are going to be great, but they've never been out in the sun. So they're lacking vitamin D, which works hand in hand with calcium to help bone develop. So from the point they're newborns, let's take them out. Yes, go bask with your baby, let them get as much vitamin D as possible. When it comes to helping our kids develop, as parents, as mm -hmm. caregivers, what can we do at home? Okay. So there are various things that I said from the newborn. So let's even do like speech um, development. Some of the things you can do is um, exposing your children early enough to reading material. A child as young as six months, definitely they won't be able to read, but they are pictures. So you don't necessarily have to read an elaborate story for them. Get a book with pictures, very colorful, and tell a story. So encourage things like story time. Maybe when you're taking your children to bed, read a story for them and open the book, let them look. And you're like, this is Mr. Bear. This is what Mr. Bear is doing. And it could just be the pictures and you're just describing what it is that they're doing. And then you want to be very clear and use very simple language, especially for toddlers is from one to three years, if you want to encourage their speech. So you'll notice like if they want a cup, I mean, not necessarily say the entire word cup, I should be say ka. So once you say, okay, so you want the cup, so you are, you're trying to prod them on without really being judgmental. You know, try not to criticize a child and like, no, 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 that's a cup. So, say cup. Yes. So that comes out a bit more harsh and being more critical. So if she says or the child says this is a car, but you know what she's pointing at, so you're like, yes. This is a cup. So you help them learn that way and develop their language. Learn. Yes, and you say it very clear and very simple. If she says that's a duh, and you can see she's clearly looking at the dog, it's like, yes, that's a dog. Or if they use gestures, because like I said, some children may not really know how to articulate, but you can see she's pointing at a cup of milk. So it would be like, yes, you want some milk? So that she learns, ah, that's milk. So and avoid... Um, questioning the child or interviewing the child to right. say, he's like, what is this? Because like I said, children learn from copying. So they will learn from you. And you say, mommy is drinking from a cup. Then she'll also learn. This is called a cup. And then encourage them to have conversation. Let them lead the conversation and you be the one to follow. So as much as possible, if your child wants to talk, then mimic them because they also echo. She points and you're like, oh, you're looking at the bird. Oh, look, there is a car. Oh, see, there is your brother. So anything that she's interested in, talk about it. Encourage them to talk about it. Let them articulate and then you just assist them. And then I feel the need to mention in our generation, in our times, we need to reduce the distractions. TV time, uh, screen time, our mobile, time, so, our so much mobile. screen time. Exactly. I know sometimes you have a lot going on and you want to distract your child so that you can um, achieve a certain task, let's say. But it doesn't necessarily help because, like I said, you need to use very simple language and they learn from copying. And sometimes the cartoons may be okay for a certain age group, maybe right. the older ones right. who are able to understand what is happening. But for your younger child... The speech is a bit hurried in the cartoons. It's very entertaining and it's very colorful, but it doesn't do much for their speech. They need very simple, very clear speech. So you want to avoid their distractions. And even though you're going to do maybe TV time, maybe it should be supervised TV time. So if she's watching Tom and Jerry and you'll be like, oh, that's a cat. That's, that's a mouse. mouse. So at least they can get something from it. It's not spending hours on end on TV time, which just proves to be a distraction, but does very little for their speech development. Right. Yeah. The one set of parents we can't leave out in this conversation, because when it comes to milestones, we all agree that kids develop in, uh, you know, at different stages, but then you have kids who then have these developmental delays. Yes. 
And this sets them aside, especially for a parent who has a child with a special need. Yes compared to this parent who the milestones are coming through, you know, within the brackets that you have mentioned. Yes. What help, okay. number one, what help is out there for a parent out there mm -hmm. whose their child has not achieved some of these milestones or they can feel mm -hmm. there's something that is off. How can you help mm -hmm. a parent like that? What tips can you share mm -hmm. with a parent like that who's out there frustrated and feeling alone? Like yeah. every, other, every other child has achieved this Exactly, milestones. and my child, you know, has these de this delays. Mm -hmm. So first things first, because like I said, for most children within the first year of life, you'll find that they have very many visits to the pediatrician or the primary health care giver. So the first thing I want to encourage parents, have this discussion with your doctor. Tell them, ask them, what is my child supposed to achieve? Because what you want to avoid is the noise from everybody else. Your child should be doing this, why aren't they doing this? So talk to your doctor about it. Let them be able to do that assessment. Number one, early intervention. So number one, early intervention, very important. Very important. Because with early intervention, for example, like I said, if it's something like speech delay, if your child is having recurrent ear infection, this is something that we can pick up pretty early, have it treated, and the speech continues developing. Uh, same thing with, uh, like I said, the motor milestones. If your child is having difficulty, whether it's supporting themselves, if you are able to identify what the problem is, is it an underlying disease? Is it some deficiencies that they're having? We're able to intervene early. And if it's something like a birth injury, uh, where you have something like cerebral palsy, where the child has very um, rigid uh, movement uh, because they have um, increased tone in their hands and right. their legs, and it's difficult for them to walk and achieve these motor milestones, there is physiotherapy, occupational therapy, which they use some certain kinds of exercises to help the child develop mobility in their limbs. And though it might take longer than a child without developmental delays, eventually they will achieve these milestones. They will be able to walk, they will be able to sit. In some cases, they will be able to feed themselves, depending on the kind of delay that you have. So early identification, right. early intervention. We have speech therapists for children who have delay in language and speech, and they'll be able to identify from an early age. And there are different interactions and tools that they use to encourage these children to talk. Like I said, some of them, it's just a matter of the language is great. They're able to interact and gesture very well. Right. They just haven't learned how to articulate. Simple things like children are not able to roll their tongue so there are some exercises that they do where they're able to roll their tongue and learn how to pronounce their words. So I would say early intervention, if you think something is amiss with your child, let them have a proper assessment done. You might find it's something very temporary, and once you sort out the underlying issue, then they go back on track. And then there might be some who need a little more, where you have the speech therapist, you have the occupational therapist. So all these are available here. If you just have initial assessment, then we will be able to direct you to where your child needs to get the assistance. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mate, yes. for coming to the show today. Thank we've you learned, for having me. We've learned a lot from you when it comes to baby milestones. Yeah. And I'm sure for the parents who are watching, they'll find this show very insightful. Mm -hmm. And we thank you really for your time. Yes. And thank keep up the good much. work. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you for watching today's parent. On today's show, we were talking about baby milestones. In the studio, we had Dr. Mate, a pediatrician with the MP Shah Hospital. And the one thing that she has emphasized on that early intervention is very, very important. And what we do at home to help our kids develop, we have to create an environment that helps them to do that and to see how to engage them better. We've been here in studio at Little Cribs, the home of fun, durable, and exciting kids furniture. And I have been your host, Christine Casina. And for parenting resources, you can find them on www.supermamas.co.ke. I hope you enjoyed today's show. We look forward to having you next time.